Greetings fellow scribes! Welcome back to the Archive! This week I begin a series talking about the Trinity Continuum. I'm only going to cover the Trinity Core Book and Aeon, but before I start talking about that, let's talk about a little bit about the history of this. You see, the Trinity Continuum was originally released by White Wolf. It was under three books. Trinity, which was originally called Aberrant, but they got a cease and desist letter th thrown at them by MTV over a little show called Aeon Flux that they felt there would be some brand confusion with. And so the initial release of Trinity had stickers put on the covers that said Trinity instead of Aeon. And there are a handful out there that got released before the cease and desist letter. And those are sort of the holy grails of game collectors trying to find original Aeon books with out the sticker. But you had Trinity, and then they released Aberrant, and then they released Adventure. All three of these are set in the same world at different times. So sit back, relax, and enjoy as we start talking about the fourth era that was added by Onyx Path. The Trinity Core era. Imagine, if you will, our world. You know this world. You know how the governments in interact, how people interact with each other, all this. Now, let's take into this world those people who excel. Those people who have been put through some instant, some moment of crisis, and came out the other side. And they came out changed somehow. No, no, not, not supernatural change. They're still human, but something has changed within them, in, within their spirit, you could say. And these people are, maybe they're stronger, maybe they're faster, maybe they're better able to smooth talk their way through a situation. Maybe they figure out ways to cobble together a bunch of electronic stuff that shouldn't work to do something amazing. If only for a brief moment. These people are called talents. And most of the world doesn't really recognize them as being any different for, from you or me because they're not, really. They just are talented. They're really good at things that normal people, maybe even some specialists, just can't be as good at. In 1922, a man named Maxwell Mercer was a billionaire philanthropist playboy type person. And he went missing for six months. No one knows what happened during those six months. He never told anyone. When he came back, he 
started an organization. This organization was called the Aeon Society for Gentlemen. The purpose of this was to go out, do good old-fashioned adventuring, exploring, looking for amazing things, and, oh yeah, doing philanthropic work. You know, stuff like finding better ways to burn coal, stuff like that. Pushing the boundaries of science, of technology, doing generous things, building hospitals, advancing medical science, all that. Now, of course, time goes on, and the and Society for Gentlemen expands. It drops the Four Gentlemen from its name, becoming just the Aeon Society. Something to remember, in the Trinity Continuum, the Aeon Society exists through all the eras. It exists in the time that would be adventure, it exists during the Aberrant Period, and it exists during the Era of Aeon. In fact, it's supposedly the Aeon Society that came up with the technology that turned people into Scions. But we'll get about that. We'll get to that when we talk about Aeon. Now the Aeon Society grew. It grew big. And in fact, it spawned off subgroups from it, such as Neptune and Trident. Trident is more the original agendas of the Aeon Society because as it grew, it kind of lost track a little bit of those old notions and just sort of went big, you know, dealing with international incidents and stuff like that. While Trident focuses on the small scale stuff, Neptune is the first responders to massive natural disasters or even unnatural disasters. An oil rig blows up, Neptune's gonna be there. A nuclear reactor goes critical, Neptune is there trying to minimize the damage. And there are, of course, other groups within this setting. Branch 9, for example, is a branch of the U.S. government created by Teddy Roosevelt, and their purpose is to deal with international organized crime. Of course, you've got the Aeon Society. You have Archangel. This is an interesting group in that it was created by... Recently, in the in the nineties, by a Portuguese billionaire. You see, the billionaire's son, and the son of the billionaire's driver, were kidnapped. The kidnappers killed the worthless son of the help in a very brutal manner, involving chopping him up into bits and sending his parts home. And the billionaire first funded a group of mercenaries, the best he could find, to rescue his son. And then he swore never again. And so Archangel was formed. 
it is a large scale organization that goes after those who target the weak, the helpless, the powerless. Targeting criminals who think that they are above the law. Yes, it's night right. It is the foundation for law and government without Michael Knight or the Knight 2000. And yes, that's pretty much the best way to think of them. Except they're professionals. They will recruit the best of the best that they can find people who are good at sifting through countless data points to find people who are doing the wrong thing. Professionals, you know, op professional soldiers and covert operatives who are able to rescue kidnap people without violence or with minimal violence. And that is Archangel in a nutshell. Of course, you know, you've got the Global Cart Cartography Initiative. Basically, it's a whole bunch of people whose big thing is they're going around the world looking for unexplored places and mapping them. Or they're looking for lost ruins. You know, the stuff like where people use satellites to scan through the jungle to find lost Aztec cities. Or where they've used technology to remove the desert from Egypt to find lost temples, lost cities, all that. That is the stuff that the GCI pushes for. Of course, I met, mentioned the Neptune Foundation, and then there's this group called Pharaoh's Light Keepers. They are operatives who are funded by a mysterious entity called Pharaoh's. And their basic job is they go after those who are targets of something. It's... They're, they're kind of the hard-to-figure-out group. It's... They want to make sure, like, a stolen weapon is destroyed. They're... They're gonna capture a group of terrorists and leave them tied up out front of a appropriate building. That sort of thing. They're basically they're sort of a vigilante organization but they're coordinated by one person and they operate in a cell structure. Of course there are a whole bunch of other little groups one of the more interesting ones is Les Fantomes, a group of thieves, cat burglars, Ocean, Ocean's Eleven type people, and that's their specialty. One of the minor groups, though, that I feel deserves a special note is a group called the Theseus Club. Because this group, founded after 1924, is a direct literary reference. There is an old story called The Most Dangerous Game, where a man was shipwrecked and he came onto an island, and the island was run by a rich person who would feed the 
person who shipwrecked, and then let him go and hunt him after a head start. And the Theseus Club was founded by the person in the story who was the tar the last target of General Zaroff. And he'd found a reference in some of the good general's books to a group called the Minoan Society. And guess what they did? They went around hunting people. And so the Theseus Society was founded to hunt the hunters. Of course, it's changed a little bit over the decades. It focuses as much on going after those who prey upon the weak as it does going after the Minoan society. But they still will drop anything as soon as rumors reach them of the Minoan society acting somewhere to do something about it. This is a group that comes with a ready-made antagonist. And that is awesome. And that is just the quick overview of the world of the core Trinity book. It is our world. It has all the threats and such we are accustomed to. Oh yeah, there's one little thing I kind of forgot to mention. Weird science is a thing. Yes, you can make in this setting a pulp action freeze gun. It's probably going to be a little bit more scientifically based, but yeah, you can make heads-up display contacts. These are special things. These are advanced pieces of gadgetry for our era. In other eras, these will not be anything special. Right now, they are. And, yeah, that is essentially the core. It is our world, but with people with special abilities that aren't supernatural and are really technically within the realm of human possibility. But they're pushing that boundary. They're right up against the edges of what makes human humanity possible. What's humanly possible and what's supernatural. Next week, I'm going to talk about Aeon. And then the week after that, I will be talking about the story path system and how it applies to the Trinity Core and to Trinity Aeon. So until then, I'd like you all to remember to have fun and keep gaming. <laughs>